Let the guessing begin. The Washington Post says that Donald Trump has narrowed his list of suspects of who wrote that op-ed piece to people who work, quote, on national security issues or in the Justice Department. And I, for once, agree with Donald Trump. I think it's someone who works on national security issues, and I think it's Dan Coats. So who did it? We'll ask our guests. Joining us now, Jennifer Rubin, a conservative opinion writer at The Washington Post and MSNBC contributor. Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com and an MSNBC contributor. And Ron Klain is back with us. And Ron, I'm going to let you go first because I saw a tweet from you earlier today uh, saying that you had a guess on this. We have not shared notes. I have no idea what your guess is. You had no idea what mine was until I just revealed uh, my big Dan Coates guest with the big wind-up to it. Ron Klain, who wrote it? So, uh, Lawrence, I also said that tweet, it's someone I share something in common with, and that's my fellow Hoosier, Dan Coates. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, I share your guess, and for a lot of the same reasons. I mean, he's someone for whom there is no love lost between him and Donald Trump, one of the few members of the administration to publicly differ with the president. As you say, you have to be from the national security team to write that piece. It cites our handling of Russia as a success. No one but someone from the national security team would think that. And then it does have this political overlay, the language about free markets and free people, the, the embracing of tax cuts as a major success. That's a Republican politician. And then the, the ending uh, kiss for John McCain. So you add that all up, I think it fits Dan Coates like a glove with the final point that he is near the end of his career, doesn't really care about the consequences. I, I do think all the signals point to it being former Senator Coates. Jason Johnson, go ahead. So, in high school, we learned the theory that Shakespeare, was Shakespeare actually an individual? Or was it actually a collection oh. of people who put things together? Oh, I, I like don't this. Think this. I don't <laughs> think it was one person. I actually thought it was Mike Pompeo and probably someone like either... together by two or three members of the administration who are all concerned, who can then also say they have plausible deniability. I would just footnote that with a career senator like Dan Coats has the people at his side who could help him uh, polish that, and it was very polished. Uh, Jennifer Rubin, uh, who do you think? I think it's someone one level down. Okay. It was very interesting that Jennifer Palmieri, who, as you know, worked in the um, White House, um, said, you know, I'm pretty familiar with the sourcing rules for the New York Times. It could be someone much lower down. And that, to me, makes more sense. In one respect, because of this, there was one phrase in there, free markets, free people, free ideas. That's a, a Russell Kirk quote. That's kind of a brainy, wonkish deputy um, or undersecretary type. Um, I think either in the State Department or perhaps working with Dan Coates. It's not the guy at the top of the food chain. And it is someone who would have had a lot of contact with Trump, maybe made overseas trips with him, maybe have been in the room with cabinet officials. But that, to me, makes a lot more sense. And as you point out, that language doesn't sound like Dan Coates. Coates, who's kind of a by-the-book kind of guy. Now, the problem is, of course, um, even when their name is on an op-ed, um, right. these people don't necessarily write their own material. Um, right. They have speechwriters and they have staffers. But on something like this, I don't think the person is going to trust another person to write it, because that's one more person to identify him. So I'm going with a State Department or a national security deputy kind of person um, who's um, one level down. Well, I think every member of the cabinet and every senior official can expect their next question they get from a reporter to be, uh, did you write that op-ed piece? And we're going to see people saying no, and we might have someone refuse to answer, and that person rockets to suspect number one. As soon as that happens, we're going to squeeze in a quick break. We're going to be right back.